Hey, welcome to Two Cents, everybody. This is episode 69. We're going to try not to do any sex jokes. <laughs> it's October 30th. I'm sorry, right when you said that, that was the first thing yep, that came to mind. Of course it fucking was. <laughs> uh, but it's October 30th, 2016. It's about to be Halloween in just a couple hours here. Spooky, spooky. Uh, but this is the live undoctored news show we do here at Dollar Reviews. We mostly do film stuff, get to cinema, dollar reviews, a few dollars more, shit, even movie commentaries every once in a while, even though we only have... Well, technically, we have two. Well, one. One and two dead ones. Um, I don't know. How, hmm? what, what are the two dead ones? We did one for Batman Forever that died. Mm-hmm. But then which ones do we have? I know for sure we have, uh, well, you weren't on it. We have the Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance. Oh, okay. That's right. Um, so, so I wait, guess it's just what, those two, then, actually. No, I think yeah, I think we only did one, and that just didn't go. Well, we could do it now because we got the Maybe. right recording equipment to save that. Could be, it could still be a fun yeah. idea. But yeah, yeah, this, one day, this is our new show. It's where we talk about our, you know, we share our two cents on the news items. And they vary. Obviously, there's some film stuff, but lots of internet and tech stuff. VR, which is virtual reality if you're in the past. Comic book news, TV, really anything that met my fancy. I'm Brian Gillis. You can find me on Twitter at Brian Gillis. It's harder than it sounds. It's B-R-Y-O-N-G-I-L-L-I-S. BrianDollarReviews.net is also how you can send me an email. And all of our content is at dollarviews.net. But I'm here with Stephen Mominex. Mm-hmm. And you can also find me at S underscore MTX on Twitter. You don't have to spell my last name because, yeah. honestly, who's going to remember that? I mean, um, I mean, I've spelled it so many times now that I can't How do you spell it out loud? M-O-N-T-M-A-N-E-I-X. Thank you. Wow, congratulations. I am always impressed when people can actually do that. No, when I did the fucking YouTube upload that took, like, well, I spent, like, 45 hours doing that. Every single episode, typing that shit out. I was like, after the first four, no longer, there's no way I can mess up now. Well, if you want to feel more special, most people know how to spell it mm-hmm. sometimes because they have to, but they have no idea how to say it. It's French. Like, that's making always been the make, case. Make, yeah. make, um, just call yourself Mont. Just Steve Mont. <laughs> Smont or Smont, something like yeah. that was my username for work related stuff when you have to log into something uh-huh. just to make it short that way. Yeah, mine's Brian. Uh, just yeah, but and my email is Steve at dollarreviews dot net. We uh we love getting email from you guys. Hey, if you're listening right now, it's just starting, send us an email and say that you're you just started listening to that episode and just say hi. So I would appreciate It'd it. I don't know about you. Would you appreciate that? Yeah, I would really like that. You can also yeah. send us a tweet. We're on Twitter, not just us, but dollar reviews itself. Dollar review, super easy. All over the internet, matter of fact. Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, WordPress, shit. Let me get the list out here. Uh, we're on Google Play Music, iTunes, Pocket Cast, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube. We're always trying to branch out, be on more places. Um, but let's do this new section that we just started. It's called Penny Thoughts. It's actually, we didn't really start it now. It was originally on Two Cents. Then we got rid of it. Then we put on Dollar Views. But we don't do Dollar Views anymore because we don't have well, we the money. We actually gave it a name now. That's the yeah, big Penny thing. Thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Penny thoughts. And so, yeah, we, we can't really afford to go to the theater as much as we want to. That's why we do Debt to Cinema. That's actually the intro to Debt to Cinema. And if you want to throw us some money so we can do the new reviews, we might be doing, her, uh, what you call it, Doctor Strange this upcoming week. Maybe mm-hmm. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them because I have a free ticket for that. I want to see Assassin's Creed. Moonlight is getting rave reviews. There's enough stuff out there right now that we're probably going to have a couple more episodes by the end of the year. But you can guarantee that we'll have that. Just go into our Patreon patreon.com slash dollar reviews lots of different perks on there all kinds of shit check it out uh but yeah I mean, penny i'm thoughts. just gonna be clear i'm not seeing rogue one or uh fantastic beast unless somebody else pays for it it's fun sadly i think i might get suckered into rogue one by someone here you're, though, you're, because there's a lot of people that want to go and i'm just i'm very resistant towards it you now. know you're gonna so, fucking see it don't lie uh not because not willingly you're gonna see it honestly you might see not it twice in, not willingly in theaters me no i i hate godzilla enough and i get enough bad bad vibes from it that i don't want to shit on it and say it's going to be the worst mm. thing ever i just want to say i see that i'm just kind of like i don't think it's going to be for me it's like it has n- people loved godzilla and it's like i mean that first trailer has enough great uh-huh. visuals in there that i'm just like yeah and i dig the tone enough but then the more that comes out of that, it's just the more I see it's like the more empty it looks to me. And I'm just like, uh, I, I don't want to see it, man. I just really don't. It's like it got very little likes, but I still think my Godzilla review is like the best thing I've ever written on Letterboxd. <laughs> it, it just, I think perfect. you put it the best way, honestly. Yeah, That's like two hours of just a girl teasing you for like, and, and you yeah, get no payoff. Yeah, you get nothing. Yeah, so. yeah that, that sums up the experience. Like, I saw that movie twice and I hated it even more the second time. And I, that really bums me out. At least it's pretty. 
Uh, uh, Penny sure. thoughts, though. What have you checked out this week? What movies, TV shows? Uh, give us your three things, maybe even four, that you've been, uh, you know, just twiddling about, listening to, whatever. Well, I saw Love and Basketball. At least one of us did. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm watching that. T- I, I'm, excuse me. I want it is a date movie. <laughs> I want to see it with my lady friend. I picked right. it to watch it with her. I also picked right. it because the basketball season no, just save started. Save it, save it, just save it. Uh-huh. Save it for the review. I know, you said you got a specific yeah, reason. Exactly. I'll wait for that one. Uh, but I saw Curse of the Cat People tying in with Dead to Cinema because oh, yeah. we did I, do an episode yeah, I of saw Cat your letterbox. That must have been an awesome movie. It sounds like oh, you loved yeah, it. Totally. Um, I, I hated it so much. Um, you know, at first it kind of starts out in that cheesy, old-fashioned way. Like, what this is is it takes the same uh, – I'm forgetting we're the from name too, the mountains same... of the Cascus, and we were it's... cursed and sent away, and but now we're cats. No, 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 no. This is the male character of the first one that dated. Um, oh, he becomes a cat. What's now. her face? And uh, he ended Averno. up marrying the other chick, and they had a kid. And that kid, like you know, they uh-huh. is basically um, you know the outsider, the misunderstood girl, the, the weird girl in school. And like you know, every t- even in the beginning, he says like you know I'm worried about her. Something about her just reminds me. I'm, I'm remembering the name now. Some remind about her reminds me of Irena. Yeah, <laughs> the original cat when they did, and like all of a sudden, you know, this little girl. Like it should be a beautiful thing because she kind of sees like this fake imaginary version of just the old girlfriend, and they're just playing together and they're having fun. But and then I don't know. There's this weird thing with this old lady that lives at another house, and she's being taken care of by her daughter, and she doesn't believe that that's her daughter, and that daughter wants to kill the little girl if she comes over again. Like th- this thing is a fucking mess that I can't describe right. But this has nothing to do with cat people. Yeah, it's a really really shitty movie with like some really cool ideas, like just about childhood and like fantasy and innocence. And it's like you know what, you could make something interesting there. But because you fucking call it cat people and you shove in all this other stuff that doesn't belong, it just ends up being a real piece of shit. And one of the directors of this is Robin Robert Wise, who uh, lots of good you know, stuff. Uh, yeah, he did a lot of good stuff like uh, The Sound of Music, um, Sand Pebbles. Didn't we do... I, he even did a Star Trek film. Didn't, yeah, didn't, oh, yeah um, Star Trek Two, right? Uh, no, no, no uh, the first one actually. What, what, which didn't we review something for, of his on Death to Cinema? I want, I want to say, or maybe we, he just came up in conversation during the rest of the episode. I don't know. Uh, d- did he do The Haunting, by the way, the original one? I, um, I, think I don't know. I mean, this is what IMDb is for, so how about I fucking cheat since I never do okay, that? Okay, yeah, you like calling it cheating. But it anyways, is cheating. Like, it's like if you're in the middle of a conversation, you take your phone out to look up a factoid, you're not I really using your brain. I don't think we'd be the only fucking podcast on the oh, internet no, that I've, uses the internet to the do research and correct do. ourselves. But I'm Everybody saying, does if it. this is, I, I just, I don't know, I feel, like I don't do it in person, I feel it's uh, just morally wrong. It's like, fucking, if you don't know it, don't talk about it. <laughs> but that's human conversation nowadays. Nowadays. It's like every time, yeah. you know, someone's talking, but then there's always someone fact-checking on a phone that's willing to correct you and back you up if you're right um, or you're wrong. Yeah, I never, and that's just how it goes. I, I mean, that, that's never. 21st century conversation. Man. Well, I mean, he did um, West Side Story, Sound of Music. He did do the original Haunting. Okay. Um, yeah, so the 60s was a pretty mm, big uh, decade yeah, from him. Nothing and, you know, of this is a good done. start. Just checking. Like, there's some nice uh, visual imagery here, but uh, th- this movie fucking sucks. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, like, you know, there's really positive reviews on Letterboxd, which surprises me, but I just fucking hated every second of it. Like, I, you know, just... There, there's nothing really to say. I thought The Curse of Cat People was trash, and I don't think you should watch it. Oh, um, I won't. No problem. Yeah, so, so, yeah, avoid it for your Halloween thing. Something that was trash, though, that was amazing is this movie called The Dragon Lives Again. Are you familiar with the term Bruce exploitation? I'm guessing it's a movie that tries to capitalize on Bruce Lee. Yeah, because uh, he made, what, like six films before he died, and then all yeah, there were like these all these ripoffs of Bruce Lee. So what this is about is that Bruce Lee dies, and he goes to the underworld. And cool. in the underworld, you know, he basically makes a lot of enemies, and he tries to make a name for himself. And one of the enemies that he has is Dracula. <laughs> um, he also fights off against Zatuishi. Um, there's James Bond. Sounds like a kick-ass there, movie. Yeah, there's The Godfather. Wednesday. It was a weird Wednesday. Yeah. Now, now get this. There's The Exorcist. <laughs> Which, that makes no sense. Yeah, it's it doesn't just make a sense. guy it's called not... The Exorcist, <laughs> even though... But, yeah, I mean, this is Hong Kong cinema, so they just took a popular movie and they were like, okay, fuck it, let's call it The Exorcist. There's this film in France that I never saw uh, called Emmanuel, but yeah, they made this, like, you know, total cock tease of a hot chick and named her Emmanuel, like, she's one of the baddies there. 
Um, who fights with Bruce Lee? Uh, you want to take a guess as to who it is? What do you mean? The, there's one guy that sides on the, a very oh, side, popular he, fictional he's, character his, his that sidekick? fights alongside Bruce Lee. You want to guess who it is? Um, is it like a, a karate guy or just random? No, not at all. He, he does fight. Is it Batman? He was played by Robin Williams. From Peter Pan? Popeye the Sailor. I like that. That's a good parent. I know, and it's an Asian Popeye the Sailor. It's This is so fucking weird. Um, and I'm glad I saw it. Like, you know, what was special about this screening, though, is that it was a 4K um, uh, scan. I, I hesitate to say restoration, but there's this organization here uh, that's a nonprofit called AGFA, and they get most of the prints that show up at these weird Wednesday or Terror Tuesday screenings. And th- what they had was, as far as they know, the only print in existence, and it was beat to shit, and they couldn't play it. So they, they've they recently got a 4K scanner through Kickstarter, mm-hmm. and they basically restored this movie. And it's a digital presentation that really preserves just the print itself. Like, so it looks shitty. Well, I mean, that's the beauty. is like Even though it was a digital preser- presentation, it does look like a 35mm print. So you know you still got the cigarette burns on top when the reels change. All the scratches, all the sounds of crackling and all that, but like it, they do preserve, I, I guess the best way to call it is a grindhouse experience. And it was a lot of fun that way. And yeah, it, it does look shitty, but for a movie like this, that's kind of the best way to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, also, this is probably the only one, I guess, that has the proper cinema scope ratio because there are a bunch of VHSs on this that are in the 4x3 ratio, and you can even watch it on YouTube that way. But uh, it was a fun watch with this crowd, and. Like that was that would be the only way I'd see it. But hey, if that's your thing to watch uh, silly stuff just to laugh at, if you want to see an Asian Popeye the Sailor eat a can of spinach and beat a bunch of the demon skeletons that, that are slaves good. to Dracula, then uh, you can do that, and it's on YouTube. But uh, the last thing I saw was Lights Out, and I had fun with it. Good as everyone um, said, amazing. L- not amazing, uh, you know. Like the premise, I think is absolutely fucking brilliant, mm-hmm. but. I mean, just as far as, like, storytelling, it's like, okay, it's it's basic. It's just kind of a fun, uh, like, horror ride that, like, does some cool things with its premise, is a bit weak on the script side, but it's, like, 80 minutes long, you know, it goes by quick, and to me, it has what's probably the creepiest movie monster since It Follows, like... I mean, you know, like, It Follows didn't fucking outright scare me, but, like, right when I got out of it, it just, it stuck with me. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing with shit. this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I, or just, like, if I'm walking out, like, in the park alone at light, super, I'm just, like, yeah, super waiting. Dark, super I, I see, like, one person out there, and they're walking in a certain way. It's, like, they seem like they're walking straight at me. I'm just, like, it just fucking creeps me out. Like, you know, your own mind just yeah, makes at, up this shit. After and so, the Babadook, I don't want to read a fucking pop-up book. <laughs> just lights out? Yeah, when you turn off the lights, like, you know, and you just see, like, a a little bit of a shadow somewhere it's like i don't know it it fucking kind of creeped me out a bit but hey i had fun with it um it, like i i wish it was better uh than it was because that premise is so fucking good but you know it's it's a really cool horror film visually like i just, i imagine that the dp just had so much fun lighting that because it's really interesting like how do you show a monster in the dark too and like still give you enough to see which you know they do it but it's like i i just i wonder how they played with that like Mm. it was because it was really well shot in that respect and they totally sell it and yeah i thought it was a really cool movie i'll probably not something that'll blow your mind but it was fun i'll probably check that one out next year like that don't breathe all the the bigger success uh like little indie horrors that came out this Mm -hmm. year because i didn't really watch that many but i'll start with the one that i did watch this week literally the one um, was Hush. I, I saw Mike Flanagan's oh, nice. Hush film, the the about the the deaf mute writer who stops a home invasion. Um, I think it was because we talked about him a little bit last week, and mm-hmm. I was like, sure. I know this is on my instant queue for quite some he time. He just had Ouija come out. Yeah. which, you know, funny enough, I think actually I, I heard some that that movie shot the same house as, uh, as Hush. <laughs> uh, no, as uh, <laughs> no, not Hush. Um, fucking the one I just talked about. Uh, and I'm uh, Lights Out. Huh. Yeah. Uh, which, b- by the way, just I gotta say this real quick for lights out. Holy fucking shit! Why people are rich in that movie? <laughs> hmm. Maybe that there could be a disconnect there, but it's like I mean, hey, I'm white. And I'm just kind of like, oh my god, no one's. You can't be that fucking wealthy, really. Like, even the boyfriend in that movie had the nicest fucking Volvo ever, with the fucking TV screens in the back seat. But what, whatever. <laughs> hmm. So Hush yeah. was uh was pretty kick-ass. It wasn't... I mean, it was basically exactly what I thought it was. I, mm-hmm. I was expecting a lot more uh, silent filmmaking, if that makes sense. 
because uh, you don't get a lot from her point of view, even though she is the protagonist. Like they use a lot of scoring and diegetic sounds and such. But when you do get her point of view, when nothing is is you know uh, making any sound, it's pretty uh, unsettling. I didn't watch it with headphones, but if I had, or better yet, if I saw it in a theater. I probably agree with your letterbox review. Like it would have been a really interesting it, take on a horror film because unlike the jump scares and the musical cues and all that stuff, you're supposed to just sit there and kind of you're like shocked by the fact that you can't hear anything. And the, the, probably one of the more interesting things about horror is that it is so reliant on sound. Like if you take out all that stuff, you take out the, the scoring and mm-hmm. the, the effects and all that sound work, it's almost never scary, and this well, one funny, like, is still startling with that lack of sound, which is probably for here though. Like thing. there, there are definitely moments where the lack of sound works, but I do mm-hmm. like I will never forget this because it's like th- there was sort of an audible gasp, like the first time that you see the guy at the door, and it's that one yeah, thing where mask, like yeah. you know it it gives you more dread, like and you make you care for her a lot more when that happens because because you can hear and that's mm-hmm. it's like kind of like that oh shit moment where you you know everyone like yells during horror movies like no 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 go this go do that and you know but that you can't when you're hear watching you. this it's like you know you want to fucking scream and then you're like oh fuck you can't hear no yep. get out of there get and then like you know the fuck <laughs> right when the guy's like right behind there too it's just like it gives you chills because you know exactly what's going to happen you know that they're completely helpless and it kind of makes the experience worse in that way it's very effective in it's one of those examples in horror where it's like you know exactly where something is happening and you're just dreading yeah. it happen. It's it's a really interesting case study. It's the first Mike Flanahan film I've seen. I You have not seen Oculus? No. So it is really cool oh. that he writes, directs, and edits his shit. Almost no one in horror does that. And you got to check out Oculus, I, though, because that is yeah, a really like, good I, I like this enough that I'll probably check out the first Ouija and Oculus next year. Uh, second Ouija. You didn't do the first one? No, the first one's the one that everyone hates. He, th- what this one is, is it's a prequel, so I guess technically you don't have to see the first one. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, the first one is like, re- it made money, but it's pretty panned. Really good home invasion film. There's a cool cat, there's sign language, just a totally <laughs> unique premise. If if you don't like Blumhouse, if you don't like the, oh, there's a stranger trying to kill me type of thing, I think you're still going to like this one. I'd buy that for a dollar. Um Something else I watched this week, and you're probably going to hate me for this, especially because I haven't talked about him in over a month. I saw Max Landis's Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. I saw the pilot on BBC America. Pretty fun. I yeah, yeah I didn't see his Crystal Cove show, which is on Sci-Fi. Um, but yeah, this was really fun. You can see it for free on YouTube the first episode. Anyway, you got Elijah Wood. You got some other guy playing Dirk Gently, who I don't know the name of. Just totally like. Well, I haven't read any of Douglas Adams' series. I have read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and just the tone of his voice is presented so well in whoever they cast as Dirk Gently. Uh, this is interesting, just the idea of the holistic st- shit. It's like, I'm a detective, but I don't look for clues. It's whatever happens to me and around me and the chaos. It just It's not a coincidence. It has to be for this. Um, just really fun. I, I'm curious to see. I know the second episode came out last night. I'm really curious about the show. It's funny because, you know, Westworld's the thing that everyone's talking about right now. I haven't seen mm-hmm. that, but I've seen an episode of Dirk Gently. <laughs> uh, well, Westworld's, it's funny. It's like when you hear that something is so great, then you're just kind of like, yeah, right. you know, maybe I'll get to it later when it's done. I, I it's think like it's... Because then I got the chance of being wowed when I'm binging something all at once I think instead it's, of eagerly waiting. It, it's that, but I think it's more so that I've seen Westworld, and I saw that fucking movie before too, anyone yeah. on the internet even knew it was a thing. And I almost picked it, you know, as a Death to Cinema pick, and it probably uh, got us a lot of traffic, but I didn't want to, and I didn't, like, I didn't want to rewatch that. I'll probably rewatch it after I see the show, um, but I'm pretty sure, even with all the twists and turns and the, all these, these theories and shit, that it's a pretty similar setup. And I don't think I'm going to be as enamored as the rest of the internet. Cause it, well, that and I think our audience really needs to know about love and basketball. I think so. That should be a very fun talk. I, I think, I mean, from what I know about it, maybe. Um, uh, I checked out, a, well, it's kind of hard to talk about video games on the show. I don't talk about them frequently. Uh, but I just technically almost finished the, the Call of Duty Modern Warfare remastered campaign on veteran difficulty. I'm going for the platinum trophy for that, which is like, the bet, like the the hardest achievement you can do on PlayStation for a game, it's literally doing everything. 
100% completion, doing all the achievements, doing all the shit. And that game is very difficult. Like, rage-inducing. Like, I spent, like, an hour and a half on one chapter, and there's, like, 20 of them. Um, I'm not done yet. I have, like, a couple days. I'm going to finish by Thursday. Thursday night is when the next Call of Duty comes Dang. out. And if you're not following at home, it's the biggest intellectual property on the planet that is released annually. Bigger than any TV show, movie, book, comics, anything. It sells gangbusters. I wouldn't be surprised if this breaks the record that they currently hold for biggest single-day sell of all time. Just because Activision, man, is that how that money works? Uh, but really pretty, even though it's a, technically a remaster. You know, it's a it's an HD up-res, practically. Mm-hmm. Really gorgeous. The fact that this game is at like you know eight nine years old and it looks this good now. Really excited. And there's finally PlayStation VR capability. Um, there there's PSVR capability on the new Call of Duty. There's like a uh, like a Top Gun type thing. So, I, so they're kind of at least giving you an incentive to buy into it more than just yeah. The certain same shit. a lot of the big games this year have little add-ons. These little just they're stacked on to what you're already paying sixty dollars for. So if you bought the four hundred dollar hat, you have something else to play with. So the big ones of mine, Call of Duty, like I said, Star Wars Battlefront, which came out last year, has a little VR thing. You do like the trench uh, Death Star fight in an X-wing. Um, fuck Final Fantasy fifteen, Deus Ex. Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, a couple other things, but it's gonna. I think it's gonna be more and more commonplace, especially next year. I wouldn't be surprised this time next year. Like every single game has something, unless it flops. But I, I doubt that's gonna happen. And, and speaking of like proof of that, I talked about it last week on the show. I was like, I have the content. I bought way more content that I'm gonna be playing more and more. Um, so. The stuff that I bought, I bought Super Hypercube, even though I didn't want to, for thirty dollars. Amazing! I already played it. It's like Tetris, but better. Uh, that I can't say that Tetris is one of the best games of all time. It's classic. Yeah, it's tough. To yeah, but this is in terms of VR. It's the only thing that I've played so far that has infinite replayability that you can put on someone's head and they get it right away. There's no nausea. There's nothing like you're supposed to be seated. Just amazing. It's thirty dollars, which is a hard swallow. But like I said, because it's infinite replayability. I'd buy that for a dollar, I bought it for 30 um, Some other shit I bought, like Job Simulator and, and fucking a lot of stuff. But the one I actually want to talk about, like I said, I did talk about last week, is Arkham VR. I beat that. Um, <laughs> $20 is the right price point. It is, did you get sick at all? Uh, yeah. But $20 Constantly. is the right price point. It is very short. Like last week I was talking, I was like, oh, I played for an hour and I still probably got an hour or two left. No, if you play it straightforward or you're not fucking around like I was, it's probably about an hour and 20 minutes long. And you can Jeez. you can play it again. Like when you beat it, it unlocks like a New Game Plus type thing where you can do like Riddler challenges and break these things. I'm going to do it to get the trophies, but it's... I don't know. I, I just I, that's probably fair too, because if VR sickness is still a thing, that's a good way to at least adjust to something that's no, that short it's, before you can really stick in there, stay in there for that long. Maybe, you know? but this is more of it's a launch title. It's tied to an IP. It's like one of the only launch titles that does that, or one of the only VR experiences so far that does that on PlayStation at all. And you know, it it it, it is what it is. Like it it is pretty cool. But what I heard about it from E3 is exactly what it is. There's no depth to it. Uh, But my problem with the thing is, first off, there's like a jump scare that happens in the middle, which I was not a fan of for obvious reasons. And VR, VR horror is not comparable (laughs) to flat screen horror at all. Like there's literally someone behind you or in your periphery jumping out at you as if you were, you know, in a fucking haunted mansion type thing. And as someone who has been paid to be that person, Mm -hmm. I was like, fuck you guys. I didn't sign up for this. I signed up to be Batman, okay? He doesn't get scared because he's Batman. He scares people. No, he doesn't. You're fucking Batman. Exactly. I shouldn't be able... knock that person out. No, no, it's, it's more than that. But my real problem was, the first time I played it, it was amazing. Tracking was perfect. I had, like, a little couple issues, but everything was fine. This time, my second playthrough, or my second go at it, not only are these jump scares, but I was having tracking issues. My When I was looking, it would jitter, like the controllers were moving, but then it would think I was going through objects. It's hard to explain. Basically, imagine a camera going 
in focus and out of focus and like wobbling on a tripod and then getting back in focus and fixing and it was just nauseating but i could power through it it wasn't like an issue as in i actually get when i get vr sick this was just like a technical malfunction i don't know what it was mm -hmm. i turned my lights off i had my lights on i opened my window i tried different things i recalibrated the lights i tried all kinds of different things and for some reason it just wasn't the way it was before and i've had similar experiences i think it's just like some that they could patch or some that's going to get better in the future. But my real problem wasn't that there was just those tracking issues and the jump scares. It's that this game ends with a psychological twist. And I really didn't like the way that made me feel in VR at all. I didn't buy this for that. Like, it makes total sense, not only just in, within the game itself, but in the franchise, especially with the way that Arkham Knight ends or just begins even. Mm-hmm. But it so this felt too real for you. Not real. I knew I was in a game, but basically you're in a room. Like you're you look into a room, and then when you peer back, you're in the room, and then the walls are shrinking on you, and there's the walls are changing, and there's a mirror, and you look in the mirror, you're not who you were a second ago, and there's like something behind you. Like it was psychologically tormenting. It was not fun. If, like, VR already makes me feel kind of sick, when you stack that on the jump scares that were happening, on top of the tracking issues, and all this, like, when I took my headset off, I was sweating, I was That is upset. sort of what you get for playing an Arkham game, though. Yeah, like, like that sequence is... You can't is, say that doesn't no, yeah, belong. That, that sequence that I'm talking about is inside Arkham Asylum. It's just, and it, like I said, it, it's totally great within the story, but it's a total fucking cop-out, and it wasn't what I wanted... Um, I, I still recommend the game. For $20, you get a, a, a real tangible sense of being Batman. Even just doing the Batcave stuff, which I had only done last week, you get it. Like, I'd buy that for a dollar. I, I, I own every Arkham game in the franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, not upset about I buying that I still never one. finished Arkham Asylum. Yeah, it's a mistake. I, I've God, that's been, what, like seven years now? Uh, a little Shit. bit longer than that, probably. Um, but yeah, if you if you have PSVR definitely get that one it's something that you can just put on someone and they're gonna get it at a very very friendly price point so we're gonna start the real news right now like i said about 20 minutes ago if you want to support us we could put an ad right here for whatever you do you got a company you fucking make music whatever go to patreon.com slash dollar reviews you can buy this ad space for only 50 dollars okay here's the other shows we do i lied i said we did debt to sim on dollar reviews before just some of the ideas Steve's kind of been teasing Love and Basketball. That's, you know, that's coming up this upcoming Wednesday. But that's mm -hmm. our semi-topical list of shame show, some other stuff that we've done over this past month for Halloween. We did The Changeling, Phantasm, Plan 9 from Outer Space, The Toxic Avenger, and Star Wars Holiday Special. No, I'm joking. That was last Christmas. Um, also, like, Ricky O, which I did a rap for, Bullworth, which is awesome because of politics. And uh, Dollar Views, which is our spoiler-free no-recap shit. So check that out. Check out our other content. We don't always just do the news. And that stuff is actually edited, so you can listen to what Steve does with his fingers. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's like almost 200 hours worth now. I or No, no, no. Yeah, it's like I, 150. Had, 150, I think. I've had way more fun editing those lately, mainly because of those intros, I think. like, I, It's just how those are distinguished, like... Mm -hmm. It's just funny how like that intro can play for al almost any tone, right? Like we Which, we did yeah, a I good job. That. We did like, and then it gets you in the mood mm -hmm. for whatever movie we're talking about. We we recorded that almost a year ago now, and we just did like the one session. No, we did two sessions. Um, yeah, but it hasn't changed. It hasn't. No, like, it really at all. like none of them have very like only the outro. Like we know we haven't we haven't just like it. a tiny bit. And it's really just like one thing that was added. It's like we'll make a, a behind the scenes episode one day. It was like this is how we did it. We sat uh, over Skype and we recorded. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we just like we put together sentences, like just kind of argued on which words to use, and then sometimes the flow of the tongue didn't work well. It's like it's a pain in the ass, especially because you're not in the same room. Mm -hmm. Like, imagine the creative process, like, over Skype. It I actually can, yeah. is not ideal, <laughs> but it worked. Sorry about that pause, people. It was a water break. But, yeah, headlines. Okay. This is where the news start. Last week, the big thing, I'm sure you people have heard about it by now, is AT&T is in the process of trying to merge with Time Warner or actually just buy them. It's a marrying. Uh, anyway, mm -hmm. part of that was kind of... What's the right term? Basically, 
Monopoly? Uh, it is a monopoly, but AT&T is trying to flaunt its good intentions, basically, after the merger, by announcing mm-hmm. that the DirecTV Now over-the-top service, which has 100 channels, mind you, is going to only cost $35 a month. I don't know if this is true. It's, like, just speculative right now. But that's asinine. That's $30 less than Sony's PlayStation View service, which is currently the cheapest. So, you know, YouTube and Hulu, they have their own versions coming out soon. They would have to compete with $30 a month, Mm -hmm. which is, seriously, it's insane. Like, cable for 100 channels... Is pr- it goes like down, 60. but then let's say this deal goes through, then they can bring it back up whenever the Maybe. fuck they want. That's what the internet's yeah. thinking. Like, I read this really great article on Variety that chronicles just exactly how this mega merger happens, the process, how it's going to set the stage. That's how these things do. When, like, mm-hmm. someone gets control, then all of a sudden they start abusing of them, and then they just go, like, what are you going to do? Well, that's the thing, like, though. I-, I can fucking up it however much it wants. This Variety thing, which you got to read, I'll-, I'll tweet it out. Um, mm-hmm. They talk that they're trying to be a loss leader in over-the-top services just so they can turn the public's perception. Because people like me are like, oh, fuck you, you're trying to be a monopoly. We get it. You make the content, you put the content on your servers, you access it through your AT&T mobile plan. Oh, it's free, like all this shit. Like, it's 100% vertically integrated, which is super stupid because the AOL Time Warner merger was them mm-hmm. going, in the future, this is what it's going to be like. And then in the future, they ended up buying someone else to make it exactly like they wanted it to be. So, it, it's a company. You can't trust what they're going to say right now. Just as this stuff is going to happen, they're going to just do it mm-hmm. and then well, well, it's it's pr- assuming that this goes Yeah, through. it's probably going to take another year for it to be yeah. approved by the regulation boards. So, we'll know then. We'll probably be on the show talking about it like, "Haha, you motherfuckers thought it was going to happen, but it didn't." But a lot of cord cutters or cord never millennials are going to go to AT&T if this happens. Because you can get DirecTV now and then mm-hmm. have unlimited data only. You know, if you're on AT&T and it's not going to count against your data cap and, and all this kinds of shit. Like they're saying if you have either AT&T internet or mobile provider, it's not going to count. Like you're going to get these perks. I wouldn't be surprised, and I, I remember saying this last week, if... You know, the T-Mobile Tuesday thing where I've gotten, like, free tickets for movies. If Mm -hmm. AT&T has the same thing just for Time Warner tent poles, like, here's a free uh, 48-hour trial of HBO Now. Or, like, uh, here's, like, a free Batman wallpaper or, you know, some shit like that. Like, it makes sense. Like, it is brilliant. The things that they're going to be able to do, the way that they're going to be able to attract people across a wide spectrum just through the fandom of DC alone, like... If there was, uh, get, like, a free Batman, well, I mean, like, ringtones aren't really a thing anymore, but you can incentivize people to switch over to your carrier all number of ways based just on their DC properties. You throw in their Time Warner properties, like, like, the Harry Potter and shit, like, there's countless ways that they can make this happen in a way that is just insanely profitable, and it, I, I'm still scared of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I... I don't have nightmares, really. I mean, I, I saw you favorite my tweet about a nightmare recently. But <laughs> I, I, I could potentially about shit like this. Um, something that I, I am also a little more scared of, though. I, I'm I'm sure you've been seeing what's going on with Donald Trump's Hollywood star. Mm-hmm. Of course, yeah. So last week, title of the episode, Let's Get Political, at the end of the show, I was talking about, oh, you know, we started off talking about the debates. I ended the show talking about I want to become a voter because of Prop Jason 60. I did, mm-hmm. in fact, register to vote last week. I did on the final day of doing so because I am a procrastinator. And this shit, the way that Donald Trump is being vindicated, it's going to get people to just be sympathetic and vote for him. And that, I'm one and of those without, people. Without getting to... <laughs> I'm not going to say anything without, you know, uh, just looking at this objectively. Yeah, not only that, but, uh, you know, there's been more. Um, so many the, fucking you know, things. The, just the issues with the emails that like the, the and what. Um, fuck, I don't even because we're not a new show. I can't report on this properly. But um, uh, yeah, the Clinton organization is in the shitter right now. And basically Trump, if, if he's going to make a turnaround, now is the time to do it. So we'll see how that goes. They've, I'm not voting till tomorrow for early voting. So They've done so many fucked up shit to just his Hollywood star. It started earlier this year 
back in like February, they put like uh-huh. it was a funny one. They put like a miniature barbed wire fence around it. It's like ha ha ha. Uh, <laughs> you know, for me, that's not going to be enough. No, to that's like what, really no, justify no, I'm saying, my decision to vote. That that but, that was like a know. miniature thing, literally. But yeah, that is definitely but a PR after, piece that they can after use. that. Someone painted a swastika on it. They put like uh-huh. a mute symbol on it a couple of weeks ago, and yeah. now someone literally sledgehammered out a piece of a tourist attraction. This is right in front of the Dolby Theater. Mm-hmm. There's video of it. I don't want to watch it, but there's video of it on Deadline. They have the guy, um, whatever the fuck his name is. He's like dressed up in a construction outfit. He hasn't even been processed yet. He's not in jail. Like it, that's vandalism. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it is. No, it. Th- I mean, this country's in a fucked up place right yeah. now, man. I, uh, yeah, I don't want to get into it too much. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you know, like, hey, th- that is total vandalism. It's unacceptable. It's not going to be enough news to justify my vote either way. On it, d- I'm it's not going to say who I'm voting for. It, but it's yeah, funny like, because, like I said, I I do think that yes, they could absolutely use this yeah. as like a PR. Well, piece, not even though, it, it could be so many things. Side. Like all of the things that have been happening to his Hollywood star could just be mm-hmm. propaganda perpetrated by the Trump campaign. That's a totally plausible thing. That's how you become president. You do stupid shit like that. You do borderline yeah, but, I mean, unethical well, illegal I don't things. think California is going to become a red state. No, no, no. But this is of shit like that. California is definitely going to be for Clinton just because it happens day. in California doesn't mean that it's a California topic. This is a national or even international news story. This well, there's, it's been kind of avoided. Like I see tweets about it, mm-hmm. but I have not seen really coverage. On I'm it. covering. I think it's despicable. Like, you don't have to like someone or their politics or the things they say. But a lot of people are really going way too far. Yeah, I mean, th- no, like, that totally is an example. I I, I didn't even know he had a Hollywood star. Yeah, to yeah he got with, it for um for The Apprentice. That show, yeah, The Apprentice. And, and uh, he's in countless um, movies. He's in Home Alone 2. He's in... I, that's the top of uh, top of my head, but he's in a lot of movies. He's made it. Where is he in in Home Alone two again? I fuck. I haven't seen that movie in forever. Macaulay Culkin stays in the Trump Hotel, I believe. And Donald Trump is in. Or there, like though? John Trump's in a limo for sure. Yeah, you can see the. I'm pretty sure you see that clip on YouTube. But yeah, he's in that movie. He's okay. in a lot of movies. I gotta look it up because I've not seen that movie since I was a he, kid. He's. I would guess without even looking at his IMDb page, he's probably been in like 15 movies. God, I have to look at the IMDb now. I'm sorry, okay. but. Just for my own benefit, I'm not like, going to I said on this it. thing to a friend. It would be really interesting if he's elected president, just from an archival standpoint, because he would be, without a doubt, the president with the most screen time before uh, being elected. Well, what about Ronald Reagan? Ronald Reagan's in a good amount of movies, but we're talking yeah. about 22 episodes of eight seasons of a broadcast TV reality show. All right. Well, he's only got 20 acting credits. Here, I said 15. So. so one of those is The Apprentice. 15 of those are something mm-hmm. else. I mean, maybe it's other TV show stuff. But he's, yeah, it's a bunch of TV shows. He, There's also... Home Alone 2, for sure. He's in a couple movies. Mm-hmm. But it's um, just in terms of... Yeah, he's in Home Alone 2. Just in terms of being on the news, being you know, on the TV shows, like... For a historical standpoint, when like people are looking at this election, it's going to be really interesting, even in terms of Hillary, too, just the amount of time they were in front of the camera before taking office. It's it's Oh, the election's going to be interesting yeah. for a lot of reasons, but sure, that is a uh, facet I'm, of one of them. I don't think it's a big one. I'm, I'm, but, I'm saying, um, like, in terms of what we talk about on the show, I find it yeah. really fascinating, just the kind of... Uh, uh, of documents that are going to be available for either one of them, especially Trump, that people are going to be able to very easily research the kind of people they were, you know, 30 <laughs> years ago and shit. Uh, and, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I do find this funny, but apparently he was in an episode of Sex in the City, and the title of that episode is The Man, The Myth, The Viagra. Yeah, that show's so weird. Yeah, j- just by episode title. It's funny. Oh, he was also in Zoolander. I don't even remember that. But, yeah, no, he's, I'm yeah sh- I don't either. I'm, I'm sure he elected or not, he's going to be on way more movies. Oh. Well, he's definitely not going to be quiet regardless of the results, but we'll we'll see two weeks from now. It's Yeah, should be interesting. Should be interesting when I'm in the ballot voting against condoms and voting for the guy with the spray on tan. We'll see. Um, so Amazon is officially in China now, and so is Amazon Prime. The A to Z mm-hmm. giant is hoping that they can compete against Alibaba. Digital content is coming soon. That's the news story. 
It's just I like this. Amazon doesn't really have competition in America. Alibaba doesn't really have competition in the Middle Kingdom. And if Amazon's there, how long is it going to take for Alibaba to come here now? I, I'm really interested in this. I, I like competition. It makes it brings out the best in people. I want to see where this goes. I want to see because they, they already have like Chinese Amazon original stuff for, for uh, Prime Instant probably in, in mm-hmm. the works. And it's like well, Am- Alibaba makes movies. They make TV shows. They're really synonymous, and I, yeah, I, I, I want to see where this battle goes. I want to see I'm what kind of rivalry this what, becomes. Like what content Alibaba has to, like, as far as what you can see. Well, I mean, or... sh- like they'll definitely bring more content from abroad. Mm-hmm. Um, like that's for sure. Uh, you know, like I was not really familiar with that name till I think I saw what was it, Star Trek or Ninja Turtles over the summer. Uh-huh. And like, I mean, that's probably about it right now. Yeah. And then you talk about it. I didn't even know how big of a deal they were oh, until you they're huge. really solidified how big they like, were. Like, they're not Wanda. They're not trying to put their fingers in everything. But they're, mm-hmm. like, they're, they, like, they have 430 d- they're million really well known there, yeah. subscribers. That's more than, than we have people in yeah. America. <laughs> To put that in perspective, well, in a country of a billion people, well, I'm just, or a billion and a half. I'm now, just saying, it? though, you know, like Amazon, like we we picture them as this huge entity, and it's like it's pretty big. But mm-hmm. in China, even if they have 1.5 billion people, that means one in three people uses Alibaba. Yeah, that's in well. I mean, not, how many people use Netflix in the country? That's the thing, here? though. Not every single Alibaba user is in China. But even still, I would have to imagine that it's probably... It's like Wanda and Alibaba are, like, two of the biggest things there. It's like everyone is aware. Mm. It's like, yeah, that's how we're going to become the, 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 the world power. It's them. And Huawei. <laughs> and, 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 and HTC. Even though that's a Taiwanese company. But even still. It's like, that's how we're going to do it, guys. We're going to do it. This way, Amazon Prime is there, but is Amazon just as a shipping company yeah. always been there No, in no, that that just came this week. Then that transition should be fairly easy, yeah. I think, or at least as an option, but it probably won't it's top like, Alibaba because, I mean, even Amazon is pretty big here, but it's no Netflix. It's like the details are pretty interesting. I think Prime for one year, because this is like a promotional period, is only $30 American for the first year, and then it's going to jump to like $60 after that, which is still really cheap comparatively to what we pay. And... Is like the way shipping works, even as Prime, it's going to be five to nine days instead of two. And the reason for that is that you could be buying something that isn't on in the mainland and or mm-hmm. it's being shipped abroad. So that's really cool. They're getting Prime, like, free like, shipping. I don't think they have many warehouses yeah. there probably. Like, they're getting free shipping regardless, even if it's an international shipment, which is just really interesting. They should do the same thing for us. Uh, so we'll, I'm sure there's going to be more to come about that. I said this is a pretty slow news week, or rather I said that before the show. Uh, but this is probably the biggest thing that happened this week. You know, Apple, they had a press conference. They showed off some new shit. We'll talk about that later in the tech section. But Microsoft showed off way more things. They did what, it, like, it was meant for their tablets. It was meant for their Surface line. But they introduced Windows 10 Creators Update this week. It's a, a free update that's coming, um, I think they said spring, and what it primarily does is bring VR and 3D across all Windows 10 devices at the core really? level. Yeah. So it's starting off small, like paint is getting updated, now there's 3D creation. You can take your phone and 3D scan an object and then like, edit and manipulate it in Microsoft Paint. This is the first time they've updated the application in, like, 20 years, okay? And once you have that scan, you can put on a VR headset or Microsoft's HoloLens and view it and manipulate it in 3D. Like, it, it, it has a really cool Jeez. concept. Pa- I'm sorry, but, you know, first update in 20 years, by the way, it sounds like the first update ever. Probably. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, since they went from black and white to color. Since they latched it, yeah. yeah. Um, but I said VR... We're not talking Oculus and HTC. They're partnering with several uh, people to make their own VR headsets now. Uh, HP, Dell, Lenovo, Asus, Acer, all of the big names in computing, obviously not HTC Mm -hmm. because they're busy. Um, (laughs) They're claiming that it's going to start at $299 a headset. This isn't wireless or anything. This isn't a Gear VR. I think some of them are going to be powered by cell phones. This is just something just like Oculus or HTC or Sony PlayStation VR. You plug it into your computer, you can do stuff in virtual reality. So 
I'm really excited about this. I knew that they weren't going to make an Xbox VR just for logistical reasons. It doesn't make sense to splinter HoloLens and that kind of uh, R&D and then also do AR and VR at the same time. So it's cool that they're outsourcing this technology to people that clearly want to get into it because it's going to be... I, I think the numbers are still like... F- that could be my gateway into it. Now. Maybe. Because like, cardboard well, didn't work out. Gateway is not in business but... anymore. Oh, that's a bad joke. Um... <laughs> That's true. Uh, I was talking about Gateway the other day. I was like, uh, I, I was with my lady friend, and she lives around the corner from a Gateway s- storefront. And I was like, oh, yeah, this used mm-hmm. to be a Gateway. She's like, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, it was like the the biggest thing in the area. <laughs> it looked like just, you walk in there, and it would look like it was cows, like just like the weirdest setup. I remember I went in there like maybe once. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what this is like, what these actually cost. They have mock-ups. They showed one on stage at the presser itself. But... Are they getting exclusive content? Do they have Microsoft Studios making games? Minecraft is undoubtedly going to come to it, but what's it like for the storefront? I, I'm really curious to see. This is just an announcement, so we'll probably hear yeah. more as it develops. Have... And by the time that they're starting to mm-hmm. release it, there should be more out like there. Their, their announcement was good enough. Like I said, Apple did a press conference this week. They didn't show off any VR. They're going to be the last people to the party, which they always are. But this time it's going to sting. I don't think they're going to be able to get into the game because there's going to be so many companies already out there with content and with devices that you'd be stupid to wait for Apple to do it. Especially because it's going to cost more. Like, if this this uh, Microsoft version is $300, the Apple version's got to be at least 4 maybe even 5 So Maybe 6 honestly, Yeah, like if because everything Apple mm-hmm. is, like, double the price. Yeah, so unless they have, like, a ton of content they're working on right now, they're going to blow the fucking doors off of people with the kind of things they're doing. I, I can't wait till the next year to see because they're losing money. They their their stock is dropping steadily. Their Honestly, revenue. Since Steve Jobs went mm-hmm. away, like that company just hasn't been the same. Yeah, like they're yeah. they're stagnant. We talk about them a lot. Uh, but the last thing here about Microsoft, and this is kind of cool too, um, they just baked in Twitch like game live streaming through Windows 10 now, so it's going to be available. And they did this by uh, acquiring a company called Beam just in August. So in two months, they took this startup and they threw that that uh, ability into their operating system. So now they're looking to compete with the likes of Amazon, which owns Twitch, uh, even YouTube, really. So, you know, you put that on your Xbox. Now you don't even have to do Twitch. You can do whatever the fuck they call it, Beam or whatever. Really cool. They're, it's called a creator's update. It sounds like a great amount of content. They're probably trying to steal Apple's Thunder, who used to be, you know, think different, make movies, make iMovie, mm-hmm. here's iPhoto, here's all this shit. And Microsoft's like, okay, we can do that too. Let's go, let's try something different. So they're, they, they like totally switch just everything they do over the last eight years or so. Like Microsoft is actually being innovative. Since Bill Gates stepped down, they've become a whole different company. Outside of like you know purchasing LinkedIn for some reason, but for the most part, just real smart. I really really like what they're doing. I'm probably gonna buy a PC, uh, maybe even this year. I, I've missed having a desktop. Yeah, just so at least that way you're not waiting for your laptop to crash. Exactly. Well, not even just that. Like ready to this retire. this laptop could last me like another ten years if I use it like a laptop. You know, like I'm not at home. I need to use it. And I just want to get yeah, but I mean, like, how computer. long does your battery last to the point where like we've lost episodes because your battery? Well, I mean dies. that was weird because I was in my car, you know. Well, that too, but I mean it's like twenty percent and then just shuts. Yeah, it off. does. Like, it does it, that. It's bloated. It's not going to last. Like it's that plugged long. in right now, and it's been plugged in for a while. And it's at ninety seven percent. It's probably humming. I'm guessing, oh yeah, too, for right? sure. I mean that's the fans yeah. too, though. But yeah, no. It's... Yeah, that's where uh, you get that coming from your audio bit. Yeah, well, I mean. What the fuck am I gonna do? Put a fucking suppressor on it? So it's an old. I'm just laptop. saying, it's way quieter. Th- it, mine's way quieter because you yours got that is a lot younger. There. Come talk to me yeah. in in eight years. Let me see what your computer sounds like then. If it's even around. Hey, the Mac that I started on was like by the time we started recording, it was like what six years at that point. It was humming too. But My, mine's even older than that. Actually, one. yeah, we were both humming. Yours was loud. Yeah, well, it's it's old. That's what, that's yeah, what it is. old things do. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, it's time to, you know, take it back, you know, yeah, no. take a shotgun with no, you. No, fuck and... no. I'm going to, I don't, yeah. like, I have, I have my portable DVD player still. I plugged it in the other day, it still works. Like, I take <laughs> care of my things, especially my electronics. I would love, like, when I have kids, just be like, you ever see, have you ever seen a picture yeah, of one no, of like, these I before? I still got cassette players and all that. Yeah. Like, there is something cool about collecting old media, but... There's something fun about destroying it, too, at the same time. Uh, I have done the office space thing before. I did destroy a printer with my hands in a backyard. 
With, I mean, with like, weapons. you know, taking a gun with you and just shooting it. There's something really fun about that. I haven't that. done that, or but I'm just saying. just full, full on, like, taking a bow and arrow. You did do... Oh, I lost Archery that. style. Like, yeah, the, 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 hanging it up on a target. There's something fun about that. Mm. We were talking about VR a second ago. VR is later in the show. If you want to listen to all that stuff, it's right at the tail end. It gives you a reason to listen. Uh, Queen earlier this year, or this summer, actually, partnered with mm. Google to do VR. One of the biggest pl- bands on the planet even though they don't make music anymore, is doing the same. ABBA's coming to VR soon. I'm very excited about this. Yep, you can be. I I, I want to see this shit. I haven't seen the Queen one, because I don't really care. But I, yeah, I'm I'm truly excited to see what kind of shit they do. Maybe they make new music. They release it in VR first. I will let fans enjoy that one and just sit it out. You're not into the ABBA? No, no, you know... my mom was in high school like you know i bought her mama mia for christmas Good one movie. time or i don't know maybe it was her birthday because i know she wanted to see it but even she wasn't that into no? it um yeah i i never want to see that movie. i really like the the it's like the bachelor party scene in that movie where they do fernando and it's like uh whatchamacallit it's like uh fuck i don't remember her name right now i, don't know. I just remember that movie coming out the same weekend as dark knight which is perfect counter programming oh, yeah. because like you know dark knight would sell out and then you know the guy would just look at his girlfriend and be like okay i guess we can go see your movie it's like let's go the funniest thing yeah. about mamma mia is it's the highest grossing block like a uh, broadway adaptation Really? Yeah, because the power... And it never made it to number the one. The power of ABBA. Wow. Talking about number one, did you see that uh, Medea beat out um, everything <laughs> again. again this weekend? Yeah. That's awesome. Power Tyler Perry, Tyler man. Perry, he's, good job. He's got a crowd. Yeah, always a good job, man. I gotta have mad respect for the guy. Yeah, for sure. Well, not Yeah, also Alex had Cross. a lot of fun with Ninja Turtles this year. Oh, Alex Cross is amazing. That might be a Death to Cinema As selection. a bad movie. Yeah. Oh, my I'll God. I'll make you rewatch like, that I, shit. It... I would rewatch it, but I would get very drunk for that. Maybe even I would do a drunk commentary. How about Maybe. that? Maybe Drunken Dollars was the just name. Just that trailer for that movie. You know, I, oh, yeah, you I do me. the intros. I might just play the entire trailer <laughs> for that one if we did that because it, it is such an amazingly bad trailer where it's just like every beat of it. It's just I I I can't help but laugh at that. So. Talking about Abba, excited. How are you going to convince me to leave Detroit? I, are you fucking kidding me? I was excited. Who the fuck about Abba that? and VR? Sorry. No, no problem. I'm just mm-hmm. trying to get the show over. And now I'm getting excited about Alex Cross, probably because <laughs> we're talking about Abba. Uh, Abba's coming back in VR. Muppet Babies is coming back to TV. They canceled the is Muppets. This where you announce your new podcast. If it happens, it might. Yeah. So yeah, Muppet Babies is coming to Disney Junior, which is like the kitty block of Disney Channel. And yeah, I I reached out to to Brennan over at Screen 101 who probably loves the Muppets just as much as I do. And I asked him, I was like, are we, are we going to do a podcast for this one? He was like, yeah, maybe. So <laughs> as we, I, oh man, I was so sad the day they canceled the ABC show. I was watching Muppets mm-hmm. Most Wanted a little bit last night. Starship Troopers also. Um, and yeah, I was just like, I was thinking about it right then. I was like, Muppet Babies is coming back. I love Muppet. It's like, it's a theme song to a TV show that gets in my head all the time. Muppet Babies, we're coming Man, to your I, dreams. Just I've close your eyes and make babies. believe in your dreams come true. Uh, really cool concept. It's just like it's it's like mixed media, so it would it's not there's no puppets, there's no Muppets. It's yeah, it's, no, it's, animated, it's animated. And then um, I remember Muppet Babies making a cameo in Cartoon All Stars. Did you ever watch no, that? I, I know oh. that they were though, um, but it was it was like they would spoof like Indiana Jones and. And just varied, like, movies and TV shows, and they would have live-action stuff, too. Like, they would literally have, like, f- you know, footage from, like, Star Trek or whatever while mm-hmm. they're just, like, kind of doing, like, the knockoff version of it, which is exactly what The Muppet Show was. And it, they just, like, took that and they made it for kids. And I really hope that this isn't really, like, shitty daytime TV CG animation, but I know it will be. <laughs> Oh, um, but I'm I'm still looking forward to whenever this comes out. Hopefully in the next year or so, because you know they might have gave up for the the prime time audience. But I'm happy to see that Disney is still gonna try to use the Muppet properties and IP because I doubt a movie is coming anytime soon. They're not making video games or books or anything, and at least it's still living. Like it, it makes me happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like Jason Siegel at least did his job. Oh yeah. There. 100%. Yeah. 100%. He, he made it something that is important again. Like, 
I love that. Sadly, movie. everything that followed that has not been as great. But yeah, Muppets Most Wanted is still kind of. Fun, it has it has some good music. There's some good cameos, but it's just not good. I don't really have a desire to rewatch. No, it, yeah, you, we, like, I just I I remember like you know the one moment with uh, what is it the anti Kermit? Like, yeah, yeah, Constantine. Just that there's that one line that I will I will always crap at, <laughs> crack up at, and that's where he just says woman. Can you not see that you are bothering me? Yeah, that's right before the best song in the movie. Like one of the best Muppet yeah, songs of all time. Yeah, that too. Like just like the baby the five stop right from there, there. Are pretty amazing. Let me yeah. play in the air. This was my thing. And then the rest is okay. Yeah. I can give you what you want. I can give you what you need. Okay, I got. I'd love to rewatch that movie. I gotta too. hear I, that when the, I get the, the first. Uh, the first new Muppets. Yeah. Oh, so good. I sold that Blu-ray though. Oh, that's a mistake. Damn. Well, I had to, that. How do you? That was I, the first movie that I saw twice in theaters on purpose. Really? Yeah. Ever? Well, yeah. The, the first. Like, yeah, I, I sold it just because I was like, you know. I'd seen something twice before, but that was unintentional. It was well, a bad one. It was I, a bad choice. I, I've seen a lot of movies twice in theaters in general. Well, I, I have now. Yeah, that one. Hey, if I didn't sell that Blu-ray though, then I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I had to sell a lot just to get out Moving from Disney TV to Disney movies, here's our film section, which is very puny this weekend. Staying with Disney, like I said, Pixar announced some release dates. Uh, Incredibles 2 and Toy Story 4 are swapping when they're going to be in theaters. The Super Family Yay. Second Adventure is going to be June 15, 2018, and the Bo Peep rom-com mystery is going to be June 21st, 2019 now. Supposedly, yeah, this is I, because the production on Incredibles Two is moving like at a breakneck pace, but it's like this is so weird. They well, no, it, it has to be probably for some good reason, honestly. Of like maybe they because I don't know what the process is like for Pixar, but you know it usually takes them like four years yeah. to make a movie. And I, I mean, yeah, for Incredibles Two, I I don't know. It's just you you can only assume like they're making that choice based on which one's working and which one's going to be ready at that point. And I, hell, maybe yeah, they probably set a certain amount of time and they just they're moving faster than they thought they would. You know, that's at least they're not racing against the clock. There, mm-hmm. it's not like Good Dinosaur where they're making last minute changes and they got to you know cram shit out and delay an entire year for one movie. Well, Sony's racing against the clock too. Uh, I think it was like four months back they announced that Joe Carnahan was writing the the script for their Uncharted adaptation. Mm-hmm. They got a director this week. It's Sean Levy. Not the pick I would have for like an no. Indiana Jones type video game adaptation, but fuck it, whatever. So the script must be finished. They got the director. Casting's got to be around the corner. I would be surprised if they're trying to get this out uh, like summer 2018 if they already got the director. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I don't know. Sean Levy puts out stuff like faster than that. Like he's able to put out two movies in one year. This is a big movie, I mean, though. He, he works pretty. This fast, This is though. one of PlayStation's greatest IPs of recent history. Like they're not gonna want to put out a bad Naughty Dog movie, their first Naughty Dog movie. And you know they they had the Ratchet and Clank movie earlier this year. Sly Cooper's coming out next year, so they're already doing their PlayStation films. But this one's live action, and this is the one that people care about, and it is... I mean, they put out Uncharted 4 this year. They've already made a lot of money that way. If you buy a PS4 brand new right now, you get Uncharted 4 in the box. You know, like, they're not going to want to rush-rush this. It's just on a fast track. They're trying to Mm -hmm. capitalize on the video game craze that's still going before VR takes over, and they also want to get an adaptation out there while all of them are still in theaters. We got Warcraft... Assassin's Creed this year, I said Ratchet and Clank, we got Resident Evil in January, um, so many that are just going to be coming that you kind of forget about them. And I was thinking about this the other day, Need for Speed is so underrated. <laughs> that movie is such a fun ride. It is a fun movie. I mean, it's just as dumb as oh, probably yeah. something like The Fast and the Furious. A but little dumber. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, holy shit, the stunts in that movie. Like, and the real. Know, I, I never expected it either, but, like, that movie in 3D, like, uh, holy shit, it looks great. I want to see it again. And, like, that's, it's, like, I don't think I've ever said that about a video game movie. They're usually yeah, very not actually. good, but that one, it, it's... And I did see that movie twice in theaters willingly, partly because everyone said it was so good in 3D, uh-huh. so I was like, okay, See it again it. in 3D? Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it, yeah. it overcomes the video game obstacles. Like it's just let's have let's make it wacky let's let's go on these fun chases let's show off a new Mustang and shit 
but everyone in that movie is having a good time, and it's impossible not to have a good time. Like Michael Keaton, his character in that is awesome. Oh um, man, yes. So yes. just I mean, you know, I I have friends that I saw that with that they hate that movie, but we still love quoting that movie. I'm not sure if we are quoting it for necessarily the same reasons, mm-hmm. but, but regardless, it's a fun movie, yeah, man. Totally I think fun. it's a fun. I want movie. to see that too. Yeah. Like maybe I would watch it again now. That's yeah. not, I want to see it again. Like if it's on HBO, that's the perfect HBO movie. You're like, oh, that's on right now. Yeah, I'll watch that. I'll watch that for forty minutes. Probably stars because it's Disney a movie. Disney yeah. Flick. So better yeah. yet, maybe Netflix. <laughs> maybe. Um, here's a reboot though. I don't know if you saw this. this. Is so fucking weird. Rambo is getting redone, and this time without Sly Stallone. They're calling this new version accurately New Blood. And they're trying to use it as kind of like a James Bond franchise where they just bring in a new star over time. This is stupid. I don't understand if Millennium thinks they're actually going to have a successful franchise here because there's nothing about Rambo that's really that interesting. And I'm saying this because I've never seen a Rambo film. Well, they're, I've seen two of them, mm-hmm. and they're fun, but... <sighs> fucking franchise fatigue i don't you know this summer has proved to me that it's a real oh, thing yeah. that it doesn't matter if it's a big ip property people are just not gonna care like <laughs> i mean for me like you know the movies that i remember this year it's been mostly the original stuff like swiss army man hey captain america was a lot of fun um there's i i had a great time with x-men but you know like i certainly don't need another one even though yes i am looking forward to logan um yeah, just I have a feeling like the more I'm going to hear about shit like this, I'm just going to be like, I don't care. You know, it's Rambo is like it's a product of the 80s, really. That's well, that's what people 70s even like, just really leave it as that. It's like the, the novel came out it came out in 1982. No, yeah, the first blood did. But the novel came out like 77 and it's about Vietnam. Like the but as far as a cultural phenomenon. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it didn't yeah, really it's, yeah, it's totally the 80s, 80s thing. But it's like and that's what the people you see already as. know. There has to be. You already know that Stallone is going to make a cameo. Yeah. And it's like, why are they saying right now that he's not in it when he's clearly going to be in it? He's probably going to be a producer or at least an executive producer. He might even fucking co-write the thing, you know? Or maybe make it a Creed story where they pass on the torch. That might that make could work. more sense. Could work. But... It's like maybe it's his son or his, his nephew or who, who yeah. knows. Um, but I'm sure when it comes out, if it comes out, well, Jet to Cinema will do... Rambo, or maybe before then. I don't know. At some, some point. point. You mean First Blood, not Rambo. Yeah, First Blood. What a fucking... Although Rambo was a badass yeah, movie. Yeah, Second Blood, First Blood Part 2? No. Not, or I have not seen 2 and 3. Uh, the, the one that came out... Oh, you're out talking about years, like the Rambo ago. movie. Yeah, yeah, like the just the one that's called Rambo. That one was really badass. Mm. Yeah. Final piece of film news I got here. This is completely against franchise fatigue, but it's fatigue of character anyway. Zelda Fitzgerald is all the rage in Hollywood right now. This could have been a headline, but I was like, eh. So we're about to be at 100 years since the Roaring Twenties. She is like mm-hmm. coined the first flapper. She was like the icon of the, the independent woman at the beginning of first wave feminism. Obviously, it's F. Scott Fitzgerald's wife. She's a schizophrenic. She was an author on her own. Very interesting character. So interesting, in fact, that there's three competing projects right now in development. The first of which we've talked about on the show before is an Amazon series that Christina Ricci is starring in. Ron Howard is prepping a film probably to direct called Zelda with Jennifer Lawrence. And then Scarlett Johansson is going to be in one called The Beautiful and the Damned. And that's the only one that has support from the Fitzgerald estate. I don't quite understand why. I mean, things come in pairs usually, especially films like this. Deep Impact, Armageddon. Um, to, to quote Jay Baruchel. But... Why, like Jobs and Steve Jobs? It, like it usually happens. It's mm-hmm. and and I mean this is a good character. I don't know much about Zelda Fitzgerald. I mean uh, I really like Alison Pill's portrayal in uh, Midnight in Paris, and she's been in a couple of like not her but the character that the person has been mm-hmm. in a couple of things. So it makes sense for a biopic. But you already know that they're probably just looking for Oscar bait with these. You got Jennifer Lawrence, Scarlett Johansson, well Christina Ricci's on mm-hmm. TV. But even still, like you have big name, big bodied like you know screen present women trying to to be these people and so with ron howard's project i said that just like he says his name that was weird um for instance he like the the, i think i read on thr they're like well you know with a beautiful mind he won best picture and best director for a film about someone with schizophrenia 
this is a natural fit for him or something like that. I was like, what? Like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, no, that's what I read. Oh. It was like, the, we, it would make sense if he was interested in directing this again. He did such a great job. Oh, it's familiar territory. Yeah. It's, it's safe for him. He'll do fine. Yes, he won't surprise anybody. That's wonderful it's, news. No surprises well, there. Better we'll than a totally safe hey, better than making an, pedestrian another biopic fucking, that doesn't take At risks. least it's not another Dan Brown movie. Like, how does a Dan... Inferno yeah, tank, Inferno yeah. got beat by Boo. A Madea Halloween. Well, you know, Inferno's doing fine, actually, when you look at the international yeah. numbers. That's why it exists. Like, you know, everyone loved to shit on Angels and Demons and go, like, oh, it tanks so hard. No, that was, like, one of the yeah, biggest that year. grocers yeah. that year Just not. It was a fucking hit. Well, I mean, when you're in America, all they care about is American things, which means American well, box office numbers. Oh. I mean, also, uh, Da Vinci Code made oh, money that... because of controversy. When oh, yeah. Angels and Demons, when, you know, the, they showed it to the Catholic Church and, you know, the Pope was just like, yeah, yeah, this is totally fine. Then they could not talk up that controversy angle anymore. So they were just like, shit, we just lost so much fucking money. Inferno, no one's fucking talking about yeah, it. Yeah, no, I... I, re- I mean, I also had a friend that, like, uh, th- there's a Dan Brown book that evidently takes place in uh, Washington, D.C. And he was like, why the fuck don't they do that? And I just said, well, it's a big fucking mo- uh, movie series internationally. They're going to try to sell it to a foreign audience, not to the U.S. Yeah, I, I saw The Vinci Code like everyone else. I hadn't read the book, but I remember just in high school, that was like the biggest thing on the planet. No one would shut the fuck up about it. Yeah, and, no, like I actually did read the book mm-hmm. before I saw the movie, rightfully, and it yeah, was Yeah, it's good. a good mystery, rightfully so. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, if you like Kevin Smith, you've seen it before, but not not a bad story, really interesting. If I like Kevin Smith, I've seen you've it You've seen that story before, if you like Kevin Smith, 400%, yeah. Well, you haven't seen Dogma? What, Dogma? Yeah. Because of Dogma? It's, it's the same uh, fucking different. twist, okay? It's different. It's basically the same. But, but how you get there is Oh, yeah, no, it's different. completely different how you get there. But if you had, if you were like, what's the Da Vinci Code? You're like, oh, it's a story about this girl who's the last descendant of Christ. What's Dogma? Just on paper. D- dogma is about someone that I guess, you know, for Dogma, it's actually more important to that yeah. character and to their art. Yeah, uh, Audrey like, Tateau's character. Like reaffirming what their life is. Audrey means Tateau's nothing. Just like a yeah, she, there, yeah, she is literally. It's just like coincidence. Mm-hmm. like, holy shit, you're important. Yeah, at that, yeah. like that final scene in the movie, you're like, oh, Langdon, this is the solution, Langdon. He's like, oh, I got it. By the way, we just spoiled. I, I don't care that we spoiled the ending for Da Vinci Code because uh, it's phenomenon, but, you know, I'm sorry if we spoiled Dogma for you because that's actually a fun yeah, so, uh, the movie to Dogma. Dogma, like, you, you... If there's a teenager out there listening that hasn't I'm, no, seen I'm Dogma just yet, saying, then I'll like, feel bad. You, that's not even intrinsic to that story. You figure out... It's, like, it's a fun Beth, twist, though. Bethany is shown to be the last Scion within, what, like, 30 minutes? Uh, that, that reveal happens... Well, the I reveal, think, what, but like... you can kind... If the Metatron is coming down and having fucking margaritas with you... Mm-hmm. Or, I'm sorry, shots of tequila. Which you can't imbibe. Rest in peace, Oliver. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. Yeah, I gotta rewatch that. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, here's the tech stuff. I teased Apple earlier. Let's talk about how fucking stupid they are. So they showed off their new stuff. There's a new MacBook Pro that's coming out. has a touch bar, which is their way of seeing a touch strip. Really cool looking. It has touch ID. Also really cool. It has even USB Type-C, the new standard in USB technology. Uh, too bad it doesn't have a port to plug your iPhone 7 into. They're so fucking backwards in Cupertino. They literally just announced a laptop that you're going to need an adapter for to charge your iPhone with. I'm sorry. Do, do I need to say it? <laughs> It's so cliche at this point. Fuck Apple, really. Like, there's no other response it to that. It doesn't make sense how you could be that fucking stupid. That's a dick stupid. move. That's totally a dick move. They just put right. out this phone, two versions of it, that people spent almost a half a thousand dollars on. Mm-hmm. And, of course, they're going to want to get this new MacBook because it looks legitimately awesome. And you're telling me that you can't put your fucking photos on it with the cable that you already have? That it's you're going to have to buy Apple. the USB Type-C lightning bolt cable? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It like I'm very happy right now that I'm actually completely Apple-free. So completely. <laughs> I don't have any Apple devices with me it's, anymore. It's like no one has adopted USB Type-C yet. Like Certain flagship Android phones have it. Google Pixel, for instance, the new HEC, Moto. Mm-hmm. Like, some of them have it. 
it's it's ubiquitous. There is no right way up. It's both ways is right. It's way faster. It's it's safer. All these kinds of things. And it's cool that Apple is embracing that because they're usually really late to the party. Mm-hmm. But why didn't they make the iPhone have it? Or better yet, why not add one USB 3.0 port to the computer instead of going, nope, we're all we're 100 percent done with that. Just like with FireWire, we're done with it's that. It's really fucking stupid. It's so stupid. Like, I can't even understand the stupidity. Like, Johnny Ive is supposed to be one of the best, like, computational designers on the planet. And he did this, or they let him do this, or Apple didn't veto this. Like, there has to not be brain power in Cupertino. They're so money-hungry that they're like, that's just, fuck it. They can buy this thing for $20 to make it work. They will do it. I it. It's really sad, but true. It's so stupid. Like I, for instance, like, I mean, I I will be very happy if they just fucking fail financially oh, yeah. on this. But if people buy no, this, buy like it. I I won't be shocked. No, I said, it's a it's a real. I'm actually counting. It's a on pretty that. computer. You know, like it like that touch strip is really cool. It is. It mm-hmm. changes based on whatever you have open. If you're in a web browser, it's like the bookmarks and like back like a refresh and you know like back and forward and all of the like contextual things that change uh if you're like in a dj application it's like the turntables and the mixers and stuff you can like like the whole top row of an apple keyboard is gone now like expose volume up volume down all that stuff and you can change it on the fly really cool like i said also touch id like cool functionality really pretty super thin thinner than the macbook air is right now I'm sure the battery life is gonna be awesome the screen's probably really gorgeous it's just that doesn't matter when you're that just incomprehensibly bankrupt with what your consumers have to buy to get what they need. And it's like, I'm so happy I'm out of that cult that I bought this one laptop that has lasted me a very long time and I still love, and I never went back. I turned down a free iPod. I said, no, I don't want that. I don't like using iPads and I have to use one at work. Really? Yeah, fucking, fuck out. Fucking burning hell. Um, just as weird though, Twitter. A couple weeks back, we we're talking all about ooh, someone might buy them. Disney might buy them. This people might buy them. Mm-hmm. It was like the internet was all buzz. Their stock went up. Everything was going crazy. Uh, that's probably not a thing anymore. I doubt they have any suitors. And proof of that, Thursday they announced that they're killing Vine. Really bizarre. That was like the what? beginning of the whole millennial, just temporary type of media like vines has kind of disappeared since snapchat yeah hasn't like it? snapchat yeah. limited its its usage but vine stars were a thing like you know yeah. vine set the way for for meerkat and periscope you now periscope is owned by twitter or created by twitter but yeah before instagram really like took off with like what it is now and snapchat and all that stuff like it was its own entity for a good couple of years and it's just like why Why would you kill this thing? I mean, there's probably still a good amount of people out there that use it. And, like, the the information's not really there. I think, like, you can't create vines anymore, but you can still see all the past mm-hmm. ones. And there's probably going to be a way for them to just archive the, the more successful and popular ones. I'm sure you can find some on YouTube. Oh, you, that are yeah, really you can find... Yeah, like, they've been yeah, You can find YouTube sure. compilations. It's like, instead of watching the mm-hmm. six seconds over and over and over again, you watch, like, ten minutes of, yeah. like, the, you know, like, the... 200 best finds <laughs> for pranks or 10 hours yeah. so like the content's yeah. not gonna go anywhere but it's just it's it's, it's really silly uh, it makes sense hey, can i give you flack on one thing mm-hmm. though uh you know i'm looking at the notes that brian yes, has vibe yeah. here and th- yeah and that threw me off for a second because i was like wait wh- when the fuck did they own them i had no idea that this had, <laughs> yeah, like no. i i, I, I saw that myself like, am I late to that was i sleeping one i saw time? that myself right now and i, I yeah the typo. but then i kept reading and i was oh, like yeah, oh yeah. wait vines yeah. okay what that it makes had a bit to more have sense. been is my autocorrect on my phone was like oh you always just type vibe so that's that has to be what mm-hmm. it is vine's not a thing yeah but uh, you know what also looking at the keyboards uh there's only yeah. a b right in between and the on a touch screen so. that's that's negligible yeah i mean it could have been vibe yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> could have been vice it could have but still like i i found that pretty funny because i yeah, was yeah, yeah. flipping out for a second like when the fu- i just found out about this when the how fuck are they, they how are they vibe? killing that's vibe that's thing. why would they kill the vr yeah and it's like why would anyone be purchased by disney's gonna purchase vive holy that shit that would be really like, cool yeah there's already disney content in vr but yeah, that'd be cool if they had their own yeah. vr headset um, this one's kind of cool, and it's tied into the, the next couple of things here. Um, 
Yeah, MTV Australia is adding fans live streaming video to music blocks. So if you're going to be like watching music videos or TRL or whatever, in between the the songs or during the songs, there's going to be like dance moves or lip syncings or like whatever people So it's like a sc- second screen. Yeah. It? So it, it's yeah. kind of like this is my Vine type of content or this is my YouTube shit or my Twitch stuff and, or like Snapchat or whatever, but it's going to be actually on TV. And I could see this totally getting people to tune in for MTV again because you can just do it on YouTube now. Why would you turn on – first off, people our age don't pay for MTV. But like a 10-year-old, I could see them actually wanting to watch this instead of having to you know, take their iPad out and watch this kind of content and then also have to have their other like phone out to watch the music videos. So really cool. I'm interested to see if this is just going to stay in Australia or if this comes stateside because this could just be how MTV rebrands themselves to, to stay contemporary. Really cool. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if more people do this. And like I said, it, it's kind of tied to this. Now, Twitch, we talked about them at the top of the show, or rather what Microsoft's doing to try to uh, compete with them. They just got something pretty huge. Uh, Last year, they created their whole creative wing, so you don't just watch video games on Twitch. Creative, you can watch people paint, cook, sew, like anything you can think of. You can watch, you can watch like Bob Ross marathons. They've had like the art of cooking, uh, like Julia Child, um, or Joy Cooking. Uh, and now they're making their own original content, like paid content. They've got a past winner of the Food Network Star to come on to the, the purple side of things. It's going to air starting tomorrow, Halloween, Monday through Friday, starring uh, Justin Werner, or Varner, or Warner, whatever. I don't know how German he is. Uh, Werner, <laughs> it's well, probably it's Warner. It's W, right? Um, but, no, it starts with a W, right? It, it, if he was actually German, I was saying, it would, it would be Varner. Okay, yeah, then it would be Werner. Varner, Werner, but it's it's probably just Werner. Warner. Um, but yeah, it's it, this this actually sounds really interesting because I've never seen like I've seen creative stuff on on Twitch, but the concept of this show is that he's gonna be cooking, teaching you how to cook, and also interacting with you and answering your questions on the fly while he's cooking these dishes. They're gonna post the like all of the ingredients and necessary materials ahead of time on the calendar, and you're gonna be able to uh, to buy them. Through retailers, aka Amazon, uh, to so you can cook alongside this show, which is called Chef Shock, which is like the worst title I've ever heard. Um, but really interesting. Like I, I like shock, like yeah, like lightning, yeah, like as, yeah. I don't know. Weird, weird, weird title. Right. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna check out. I'm gonna check this out. I like depending on what time it airs, because it just sounds like a perfect fit. Just cooking is the kind of thing, if you've ever watched the Food Network and they're teaching you how to do it, they do it, you know, oh, and then you cook the chicken, they put it in the oven, and they pull out a, a, a completely cooked chicken. You're like, well, how long does it actually take? What's the actual prep work? Like, I want to see it. Like, cooking's one of those things that you don't need hands-on, but you kind of do have to see someone do it exactly to understand. And I can see if this is a successful show that Amazon would offer, like, an automated delivery of said items to dedicated fans in the same way that, like, they do uh, the dash buttons. So it's, like, just on Twitch, subscribe to the guy, pay him $5 a month, also get your package in the mail so you can cook every single meal Monday through Friday or whatever. Like, this could be a way for millennials to learn how to cook. Mm -hmm. And it's entertainment. And this should have been a headline, but I didn't think about that. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, tied to this, even cooler, Alton Brown of, you know, Iron Chef America and Cutthroat Kitchen and all kinds of Food Network goodies, most notably Good Eats, which is, I miss it so much. They don't even do reruns. He's going to make a spiritual successor to Good Eats on the internet. It's coming out soon. He's going to be like, fuck you, advertisers. He's going to be making all the stuff. Uh, really excited about this whenever it comes because he's, he, he's the funniest guy. You've seen Good Eats before, right? I have not. It's like no. kind of Monty Python meets a cooking show. It's it's so bizarre. Like, they have is the guy British? No, he's American. He I think he's from like uh, yeah. Mississippi or something. No accent, but uh, no Athens, Georgia. Actually, I believe. Um, what accent? He, I'm saying he has no accent. Like he he's from the South, but there's no accent there. So yeah. What what accent are you talking about? Uh, uh, you said is he British? Yeah, yeah he, has, he has he lacks an accent. He has the normal American. Con- yeah, so he's just an American, yeah, American guy, guy, right? So yeah, yeah, he's yeah, on TV. Then why would he have an accent? Because he's from yeah. the South. He's from Athens, Georgia. Or uh, what are you are you are you saying that people in the South talk funny, Brian? I'm saying they have accents. That's a fact. I live in the South. Yeah, you live in Texas. What accent are you talking? I'm talking about, about the South South, like where the Confederacy was. 
like the South, mm-hmm. where they use a draw, mm-hmm. not Texas, not the the Omo South, not Tex-Mex, not the Midwest, like the Mid South. I'm just fucking with the you. Southwest. Just, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about the show. You uh, should East actually. It's technically Southeast. You're in the Southwest. Check it out though. Um, find try to find episodes. It's really fun. Like they have recurring gags. They it's it's like like I said, it's a cooking show, but there's a script and they're like there's there's characters that recur and like all kinds of like I really wish that they I think it's on Netflix. No, it is on Netflix. Yeah, there's like a greatest hits yeah. compilation on, on Netflix. So you can check that out. But I really wish that the whole thing was available somehow, like Food Network on demand or something like that. That'd be awesome. The final piece of uh, tech news, though, is kind of cool. Um, Xbox Ones are going to be getting Dolby Atmos support over Bitstream in an upcoming update. So, you know, there aren't that many sound bars and shit that can actually support Atmos, but it's nice to know that the Xbox One... Yeah, at least have the Yeah, option. the Xbox One, which is already yeah. a really great media player, you know, has a UHD, well, if you get the Slim, has an ultra-high-def Blu-ray player, has all the good apps, you can put HDMI in, you can plug in your cable box or whatever, that... It can be literally everything. Like, it is top of the line now for only $300. Like that's what's making me think, should I get that as a console? As a console, but, no. Uh, as a console, you want tough, a PlayStation. Yeah. But if you want a media... It, it, I'm always going back if, and forth depending on who's If you here. want a media player, like, you, if you want something to watch movies on and TV and all of that stuff, it's, that's what's fucked it's up without those, a doubt. That the PS3 was great for that. Right? Yeah, no, one. the PS3 like, yeah. was... The reason it tanked is people wanted a video game system and Sony tried to sell a media player. And the reason the Xbox One tanked is because people wanted a video game system and they gave them a media player. Like, Xbox uh, flipped places with PlayStation this generation. It, like, Sony knew. They're like, nope, let's not do that again. Nothing. Fuck. Doesn't even have a CD <laughs> player. Fuck that. And Microsoft's like, hey, it didn't work for them, but it worked for us. We'll make our own TV content. We'll have our own movie studio. We'll do this. And, like, it, it's the biggest mistake they probably ever made. I'm I'm happy they're selling the units they do. I'm happy they have the IPs that they have. But it's not enough. Like, I only want... Like, I want an Xbox One because I do... Just for the media, right? Mostly for the media. You know, it's a really cheap Blu-ray player. But I also want it for the games that I've never played or the games that I'd like to play, like the Gears of War games and Halo and Forza Horizon mm-hmm. 3 and Alan Wake and, and Quantum Break. Like, there's enough games out there that are exclusive to Microsoft that I do want to play legitimately. And by the time I get my Xbox, which could be next month, they're available for really, really? cheap. Yeah, like Black Friday, for sure. Yeah, like, I, I already saw it this week. For $650, you could get a 49-inch 4K TV and Xbox One Slim with a free game. So that was six fifty before Black Friday. Black Friday, my my, I was telling people at work six hundred might even be five fifty, shit, maybe even five hundred bucks. Damn, I could see it. Like I think a four K TV by itself, just like a fifty inch four K, is gonna be a doorbuster for like two ninety nine. Like four K is very cheap now. Like people aren't aware of that. They still think it's super expensive. Like. 4K came out a while ago now. Like 8K is only about two, three years away. No, it's cheap. But then again, like even a 1080p TV, that's like still pricey. I can get one that's like a 47 inch for like 300 yeah. bucks. Well, I mean, like which is insane, there's a price like, point that now. you can't fall below for uh, electronic of that size. But for only like a hundred dollars more, you can get the same size 4K TV. Might mm-hmm. not be top of the line. It's not going to have 3D or anything, but it is 4K. You know, it it yeah. might have HDR. So it's still pretty cool. But this is mm-hmm. the show. VR, favorite part is at the end just because it is. Um, HEC and Valve. It's the best yeah. for last. HEC and Valve are catching up on the technical magic at Oculus currently. Um, and they're going to be able to offer the, the best PC VR experience at a way cheaper entry price. What Oculus has done is something called asynchronous uh, time warp, which is like a fancy way of saying computational backup plan for like complex moments. So it was like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, um, we're talking about like Oculus, you can do it with like a $500 computer now. This is going to allow the Vive to run off of something at a uh, comparable price point. So this is really going to help them uh, like, you know, really catch up with Oculus if they are behind. No one knows. Like it's so secretive, Uh, which is really cool. It's the fact that they're, even though they have the the technically better uh, headset, the best one on the market currently, that they're still mm-hmm. trying to make it better, trying to make it cheaper, trying to get more people out there instead of just being happy with the, I would assume, the lead they have now. 
And just tying into this, there's two more things about them. Really cool. Um, AGC just opened the first official Vive Cafe in China. I really hope these come here. It's in Shenzhen. It's, uh, you know, there's already, like, VR arcades, or people call them VRcades. Um, like, VR and then C-A-D-E-S. Really cute little pun. Mm -hmm. Um, But this is going to help with penetration. People are going to be able to go, you know, get some coffee, experience VR, rent a room out, kind of in the same way that you do karaoke, basically. But this one is run by HTC. So you know it's going to be premium, that it's not going to be weird, that it's not going to be too expensive or whatever. And I wonder how long this is going to land in in U.S. I mean, there's like the Ghostbusters Dimension thing that was in Madame Tussauds in Times Square. And then there's like Mm -hmm. the Void Arcade out in Utah or wherever. So there are like places where you can go. But and and then there's also, you know, like the IMAX things that are coming in just this month, actually. It's going to be November. But how long until there's just like VR arcades or VR cafes or it? Like, I, I've said for a while now, and maybe not on air, but I have a feeling like the arcade is going to make a comeback because of virtual reality. Just the fact that it's a hard... You're not going to want to buy it because it's so expensive without having to experience mm-hmm. it. And despite yeah. it being an isolated experience when you're doing it, it's very entertaining to watch someone do it. Yeah, no, it's it's like you don't want to buy a pinball machine. You go to an arcade and play it, right? I, so I really sense, kind of love like a that. pinball machine. Yeah, but they're expensive as yeah. fuck. I like when when yeah. I, you know, am successful in life and I have income that I can dispose of. Then why not? I'm, I'll definitely buy a fucking pinball machine, and I'll like. Not only that, you get a RoboCop pinball. If machine. it exists, I've never seen one. But not only that, I would. I bet it has I would, to exist. It came out of the eighties. I would modify exist. my pinball machine so I can play VR pinball. Like <laughs> use the table and the actual buttons and stuff, but I have my headset on and I can play any table on it. I got to imagine how that should be. That's already a thing. Yeah. You can see YouTube videos. Yeah, no, I'm. <laughs> and I think uh, like uh, Pinball FX two on PS4 is getting VR support in the near future. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to do that because that seems I don't know. Like maybe I'll, I'll see. I'll see how expensive it is. I've been buying so much shit on on PS4. Mm-hmm. Uh, last big thing on the show. This should have been a headline too. I didn't take the amount of time I should have when I prepared the show. Um, but Vive. Announced a new thing, which is kind of coined like augmented virtual reality. It's a marrying of augmented reality and VR. Um, and it's a reading application called Vive Paper. This is going to be in China first, but basically the way it works, they should see Vive has what they call their chaperone system. There's cameras on the outside so you can see what's your surroundings. And also it helps with tracking and stuff too. It's going to use those cameras to recognize physical publications in your hands and derive virtual content tied to it. It's doing this through, like, basically QR codes and different kinds of, like, shit like that. And this is basically how it's going to work. You're reading a travel magazine. You're reading about the Taj Mahal. You flip the page, and you're surrounded. It's like you're at, virtually, the Taj Mahal. You can do a tour of something. Maybe there's, like, an advertisement on the next page. You can do a 360 tour of the device, like, rotate it in your hand. Um, so it, it's it's going to be a perfect marrying of the two technologies, and I wouldn't be surprised how, like, this is China right now, and it's big time. Mm-hmm. Like, they're doing this with Condé Nast. Like, GQ and Vogue in China are going to have this content probably March, maybe before then. And this isn't just going to be on PC, it's also going to be mobile on HEC's Viveport M application, like their portal. So these are special magazines. I don't think it's going to be every magazine, but given the fact that print's going out of business any- anyway, it could just be every single one. Like, you buy it once to read it. You can also use it in VR. And I would love to see this kind of functionality come to the other headsets, but given the, just the, the way that the Vive is designed, it probably isn't possible. Like, they putting the cameras on the outside is hopefully something that everyone does because... When I want to drink a water, or I'm looking for my controller, or I'm trying to figure out where I am in my room, or I'm punching shit. I've Seriously, I've hit my TV, I've hit my desk, I've hit so many things with my hands. A camera system on the outside, a chaperone, if you will, is very, very mm-hmm. smart. Like, that's why the Vive costs $800. Like, there's a reason for that price point. It's not because it's better, it's because it's better. Like, you know, it's... it's it's just really smart. So, so smart. It has the little details in yeah. there that are just like, hey. Why didn't, yeah, why didn't you think about room. this, everyone else? 
Yeah. So, like, it's, I really hope that the next generation of VR headsets, that they all have something like that. Because, like, truly, like, if I was totally in VR... I don't think a PlayStation VR wants to... It probably wants to get you amped up to the point where you're hitting shit. Because you're fucking... You're bad. Maybe, man, but, like, know? for yeah. instance, if I'm in VR, I got my headset on, I got my, head, my earphones on, and I, like, mm-hmm. I'm not aware of my surroundings. Someone could come up and, like, pull my pants down. And I wouldn't know. <laughs> Like, anything could happen to me. There's, like, countless videos, prank videos. Like, that disconnect has got to be yeah. so weird. I cannot There's imagine. There's countless videos like. online of people getting pranked in VR, especially when they're playing, like, something mm-hmm. scary. Uh, it, I got to see that Yeah, now. It's, it's weird. Like, when my lady friend was over <clears throat> and she was using my headset, I was like, I, what, what the fuck was that? I was like, okay, I was, like, putting it on her. I was putting, like, the controllers in her hands, and then I was, like, guiding her, and she was like, this is so weird. I don't know what you're doing, but I can feel it. Like, I was like, yeah, I bet, like, you know, that hasn't happened to me. Like, it has to be really, not traumatizing, just, like, yeah, like, really weird. It could be traumatizing. D- depending, way, on, depending on yeah, what Yeah, depending doing. on what's going yeah. on. But, yeah, there's like, there's that, so many videos of this show. very creepy to think about. Hmm. Well, that's the show, people. Thanks for listening. Hope it's been a pleasure. Mm-hmm. You learned something new. Say thanks, leave a comment, like us, favorite us, share us, whatever you want to do. I said at the top of the show, I'll say it again. We're all over the internet. Facebook, Twitter, WordPress, Tumblr, Google Play Music, iTunes, Podcast, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube. If you want us to say something different, give us a reason to do it. We love you. I hope you love us. Have a good one. Take care. Happy Halloween.